Welcome. Greetings and salutations. All you beautiful individuals, we are back inside Liga Mark Eric and Mark Curity Beauties to continue a little bit of MSI 2024 preview. Team rankings are fun, but when you want to get in the mud, the nitty gritty, we got to go roll by roll, position by position, and rank all the players. At least we're at least top 10. So, unfortunately, two guys are cut out of these, but. Uh, Obviously still going to be a theme of LPL and LCK domination, but there is a lot of change and flip-flop around, especially with those top four squads. I think the important thing when looking at these type of rankings and understanding, yes, the 10 is, of course, the two are excluded, and that's not meant to be any type of malice or anything like that. It's just a nice rounded number in this situation, in this case, as well as realizing within that 10, there's going to be different heat, heat zones, right? You're going to be looking at where the power is within these power rankings of these players and try to understand where the zones are. Your is your favorite player, your team, where they're slotting in and what you could be up against in these individual positions. What players to be keeping that eye on? And we begin on an island, as is often tradition with these in that top lane. You know we're going to have, hopefully, some fun ranged counter picks throughout this event. But when you go top to bottom here, Aji in at that 10 spot for PSG. A guy who's been around a long time on that squad with Junjia winning three straight in a row. The one that immediately pops out is Oscar Inan being a little bit low on this list. But truthfully... I feel like multiple playoff series throughout Fnatic's run, you were talking about him as kind of being a liability. It, it's been an up and down progression for someone like Oscar and what we have seen specifically through this year for Fnatic because there have been some bright spots. There has been some evidence of that growth as not only that individual player, but as just a professional in the whole scene and everything that comes with it, that professional status, I think Oscarin has become a little bit more comfortable with and we're seeing those effects on stage. We're also seeing a little bit of some mistakes, some learning still to grow for this player. And I think it's heading to an MSI event. Absolutely, this one from his perspective, he's got a lot to prove and still a lot to learn at this stage and take it all in. This is a very hyper conservative spot for your boy Oscarin to find himself in. And laning phase in particular felt like there were some suspect moments against guys like Adam, irrelevant, you know, good top laners within the LEC. But you get to the top of this table uh, of top laners at the event and you have absolutely no leeway for falling behind in the laning phase because these guys will completely snowball games out of control. Kiaya ahead of him, obviously, much like Ashi and Jinjia, him and Levi, absolute two He's in a pod, been around for a long time on GAM. Then we get to the pair of the NA boys. And heading into playoffs, everybody would have had Bwipo ahead of Impact. But we forgot to account for that playoff buff. And especially that head-to-head, back-to-back series, Impact Gaps, Fudge, and then Bwipo. Oh, man. Turning back the clock. Grandpa Impact showing up and dishing out the pain in the LCS. Very happy to have these two here. Number one, find it a little bit interesting. We'll talk about it a little bit. Last time that these we had two of these guys visiting MSI, the last time Whippo, excuse me, was at MSI, representing EU and EU's top planer in Broken Blade, we'll talk about in a little bit, representing the LCS. Reversal of fortunes now with Whippo on FlyQuest. In this situation, I think he could have been heading in, yes, with a lot more heat if we saw better close out performances from him and maybe not the whoopsie like not looking at where you know what's going on around your character looking at us we're on the map type of play against team liquid that's certainly a painful one to remember about that one but yes looking at them i think both these top laners can provide interesting wrinkles for these international for these uh, uh for the teams from the lcs and specifically that stability that someone like impact is going to bring and that consistency in his performance you better believe you can bet on that one if you're an LCS fan. We talk about it all the time, especially matching up against some of the best top laners in the world. Okay, Impact's not going to pop off, get solo kills, and carry the game, but he is basically never going to fall behind. He's bare minimum going even, even against the shy in their prime, these different guys. He can always hold his own as the ultimate shield in that top lane uh the border between the top four mr broken blade and now we're going on basically two years we see this guy 
Smurf at times in the LEC with all his crazy picks and we're ready for the mad scientist to take over internationally and he gets a bit gapped. Yeah, I think that's the general consensus. A lot of people have seen from this iteration of G2 broken blade and what we have seen from him at that domestic level as you talked about is mostly dominance and we have seen dominance through things that are familiar to him as well as experimenting trying new things that roll through the meta and i say new with some quotation marks we know there's not too many new things rolling through the meta in general and especially top lane uh, as a location to talk about that one but at this event this iteration for g2 this time around this msi where they do need that redemption there needs to be a bounce back there needs to be a reinsertion of them into that competition tier of international events this is how you do it someone like broken blade rising to the occasion stepping up and dishing out some of the performances that he's been doing domestically to the international crowd fourth i know seems harsh for zeus this is a guy we've countless times said he is the best top laner in the world problem is you look directly at that head-to-head -head he just had against Keen in the playoffs, and there's no way you can put Zeus ahead of him. I think without question. Uh, I mean, for, for me at the very least, and I know, great, a T1 hoodie telling you this about Zeus type of thing. <laughs> it's not the best look, but I will say, without question to me, the most talented. Talent, raw talent skill right there. Zeus is that number one for you on that list. But the performances that we saw heading into this one, the little bits of inconsistency that you can talk about with him in that top side, specifically in some key matchups that we have seen before. The Doran Daddy, well, yes, he got by Doran Daddy with, with Hanwha Life, but he got met by Keen Sante and the rest of the, the fellas from Gen G was the issue. You still got to prove yourself against them if you're someone like Zeus and even introducing some of the LPL talent again where we have seen you prove and be better than it before. You're going to lose that respect points and be knocked down behind them given the way things have gone and given the dominance that we have seen from the guys ahead of them. Same thing. It's kind of the same story for these top two LPL guys in Bin and 369. No question. They're number one, two. But before these TES BLG series, I was ready to chalk in 369 as that top dog heading into this event. But again, Bin showed up, especially in that finals matchup and uh, especially being the guy to kind of clinch it on the Twisted Fate because of that head-to-head -head that you got nine games between the two. You can't put 369 ahead of Bin. Uh, you, you just can't. And it's unfortunate because I, th I think it's a little unfair in the sense of 369, the consistency and how much of him dominating and being the difference maker, not just of what you had last year, but just just, just total difference maker. Someone 369 has been for top esports. I want to give that credit over. Of course, Keen, we've already given a little bit of his roses, talking about finally completing the full ladder climb of the LCK and getting that championship. It's going to be fantastic to see him representing at an international event like this. But yes, 369 and Bin, they got to be rolling in front. And even with all that we said about Zeus, if Zeus might be that 100 out of 100 on that skill and potential level. Bin is 99.9. .9. He's right behind him, right in that type of situation. And he's had the execution this year and making sure that he has risen to the very cream, the very tippity top of that mountain at the very best time for BLG. Third straight MSI also for BLG Bin coming into 3 0 some more squads headed uh, at, at the home court advantage in China for 2024. List of junglers now, and we can talk about, first and foremost, this list is going to be impacted by if you're playing tanks or if you're playing carry junglers mostly at this year's event. Guys like Levi. Probably want the carries to pop back in. Junjia, maybe more of the tanks, but both of them, of course, have showcased they can play both. Much like Oscar in for top laners, Yike at eight maybe seems a little bit harsh, but as we've said multiple times, Yike, a little bit of a dip in performance from what we got last year. Nowhere close uh, enough of a dip to be called a sophomore slump by any stretch. But yes, not hitting the same high. He was the best expect. jungler in Europe for all of 2023. So that that should be that explanation is how much of a runaway he was last year and how ridiculous it was to have that rookie perform and exceed expectations at that type of level for G2. Another year around more experience and this time around coming through with the squad with that same mentality, not just, oh, I'm the rookie. 
I'm here. I've been through all the same experiences this past year as you guys. I went through the same levels of excitement and the same pits of despair and disappointment when we failed at Worlds. You better believe that he's got a little bit of hunger heading in, a little bit of fire extra on top of it to prove not just to his, uh, you know, to the world, but to prove to his teammates that we've got it, we got it, and I've got it in the jungle to step up to that tier. Then we've got kind of the reverse out of what we got in the top lane. Despite losing that head-to-head, -head, we got inspired ahead of Umpty. Feel like there's more pressure, more on the shoulders of Inspired within the Fry, FlyQuest squad than Mr. General Umpty on Team Liquid, but I, I feel pretty good about both of these junglers from the LCS internationally right now. I'm excited about seeing them both represent the LCS for both, uh, you know, different spectrums of the reasons why you're going to be excited about it. For some, someone like Umpty, I'm excited that he's getting this opportunity. I think getting away from the Freddie Brion organization in the cloud that is going to exist that blocks you from any type of progression in this sense of the big titans of the LCK. Gets away from that, finds success, finds some fun with Team Liquid and gets a chance at an international event like this. The General Umpty is making his appearance on the international stage with Inspire. Rolling on through for FlyQuest. This is a much needed return. This is gonna be a reminder to everybody because he's been doing this through the LCS splits all the way through. He's gonna be doing it on the international stage. I don't care who it is. He's gonna remind the world why inspired is a name that you know and fear you know coming through the jungle and playing something hot and remember both on rogue and on eg he's put up some pretty damn good international performances against some of the best junglers on the entire planet still not enough to be that top western jungler and with a slight dip from yike i think razork pretty firmly slotted into that best jungler in eu in 2024 so far yeah, this has been a year where Razork, I think, has taken a major, not just a regular, a major step forward in what he is offering and what type of, you know, power and leadership he can represent for Fnatic. And I think we saw that through various points in the early split, the winter split of the year, and I think as well, continuing some of that power and trends into that spring split that we saw for Fnatic. You can put your faith in Razork and what he's done. And I know... That's a, a bit of a hot statement, given that we have seen many a whoopsies, many a miscommunication situations, especially on the international stage from someone like Razork with Fnatic. I think this is going to be a different time around. They have got the mojo. They've got the juice. Him and Humanoid are in that right position to be these leading players for Fnatic. Maybe nobody in the LPL gets more slander than 2019 World Champion Finals MVP Tien, who... I'm sure people are going to say this guy doesn't even deserve to be fourth on this list. They're only highlighting the games where Tien doesn't look great, where he's maybe getting a little bit gapped by Jun, but still all the regular season, pretty much all the series, except for the ones against BLG, Tien was a leading force for top esports. And there's a reason he keeps on getting all these jobs. And any of the haters on Tien, I feel, are still leftovers from the FPX days where they're feeling some of that downtrend or the disappointment on how things ended with him there compared to how things are right now with Top Esports. You're looking at that massive failure to get out of the group stage type of situation, and that's what you're blaming him for. Except that's not the Tien. Never mind, that wasn't all thrown on Tien type of situation. It's a whole different, more complex one. You're looking at the player and what he has accomplished for top esports and what he has provided in the LPL. There's no question that a guy like Tian should be in this type of position on this list heading into it. Yes, I think there's guys that you're going to be looking at for a little bit more, a little bit extra, a little bit of that, you know, sprinkle of the of the of the spice to give it that next level. But someone like Tian, no question, is one of the top options in the jungle at this event. And again, unfortunate for him. He had that Jun matchup where Jun had his way with him in that series. And I I bet you there's arguments for Jun or Canyon being the best jungler heading into this event. Canyon obviously leveled up in that T1 series. But Jun, the trajectory he's been on all spring split is just another level. Yeah, and I've, I've, you know, owner getting the constellation third place here is He's is on the nice podium. One. Yeah, you know. He, he, he collects one for T1. We'll, we'll take those guys. Uh, in this spot, but for sure, when you're talking about Jun and what he has done and how he has leveled up and exp expedited things for this BLG team, that's got to be 
that ticket and why he's got to be in this position. Canyon, we saw it throughout the playoffs, the X factor that he represents and can bring to the table for any team in any series, a best of. Yes, that is what Canyon's effect is. That confidence that if pushed back into a corner, I'm going to bet on myself. I'm going to bet on my champion pool and I'm going to do something different. You will have to have something in the cards to respond to it. He showed us that game four creates the opportunity for Keen in game five. That's the series for Gen G. They're rolling on through. The most stacked position. Time and time again, it feels like at an international event, comes to be the mid lane and probably the most heavy in terms of trash talking as well at this event as your eyes are immediately drawn to APA and Jensen. 7-8 on this list, obviously. APA showed up in that series against FlyQuest, had his best like four-game stretch of his entire career. I want to give a shout out to the guy just below it, Maple. I will say, going to keep an eye out on him and how these LCS mid laners are performing because, of course, we know Maple recently in the LCS. Uh, he was gapping LCS mid laners too, by the way. And let's just say more than proving uh, right to bet on himself and accept a different contract than what was going to be offered by DSM. What a joke that would have been. Holy cow. But here we are with APA and Jensen. Yes, a lot of trash talking, a lot of all chat going on, but still a lot of skill being shown by these two still in the tank. Jensen showing to everybody and proving that no, you know, just the flashes, just the little glimpses of the old Jensen that you saw in Dignitas. Oh, there's a heck of a lot more in there still in the tank to deliver back to those old time performances, back to the carry that he can be for the FlyQuest squad. Then you talk about someone like APA, and I think APA has had a very good split without answering the question that I think a lot of people wanted to have answered, wanted to see an improvement on in this split was that champion pool because we didn't necessarily see it expanded upon all that much or necessarily anything really added with that extra wrinkle of perfection that we have seen him have on the Ziggs and on the Aurelian Soul. Two key champions to talk about. I think Aurelian Soul absolutely going to be involved, going to see him around, whether that's going to be early or later on in the event to the more later best ofs. He will be there. Question mark on the Ziggs. I feel like Ziggs will be there, especially for someone like APA. There's no question about it. I don't know if it's going to be the right choice. It's probably going to be out of desperation because even as his champion pool changes, it still seems to kind of only be three or four champions that he's cycling through. So if they're getting picked or banned away, especially the meta ones, then yeah, Ziggs is probably going to be the fallback for him. Uh, Humanoid ahead of both of them. Pretty consistent split by his standards alongside the rock-solid performance that Razork's getting, so deserving of being there. Then we get to the nice, finally a Western guy sneaks into the top four, Caps takes over that spot from Cream. This is just acknowledgement of the GOAT of EU, and he had one of his best splits in like four years. So yes, Caps deserves top four. There might be a time that you could make an argument to have Cream ahead of someone like Caps. This is not the split to be doing so. The performance from Caps needs to be acknowledged, needs to be recognized, and talked about why it is this special thing and why you can head into confidence for this MSI with Caps into the top five of mid laners at this event. What we've seen from him, we know that not only domestically, but internationally, he can step up and be that difference maker, really separate himself from his counterpart and anybody else on the rift on that day. It's something that Caps Claps is able to bring to the table for G2. And yes, it has been Claps a heck of a lot of times for G2 this past split in the LEC. He's, he's rolling on through. He's got to be my pick in that number four spot. I think Cream is someone that we have seen improvements. We have seen that potential that still exists and we talk about with him. We've also seen some lackluster performances and still some you know early career type of mistakes from him as well compared to the likes of the product that we are getting right now from Caps and the product that we know he delivers on the international stage. The three spot is where people get upset because it's the GOAT. Yes, Faker, honestly, probably one of the best individual splits he's had in four or five years. But the two guys ahead of him are the literal MVPs from their respective regions. I, I mean, it's a small side story comparison here, but watching the NHL NBA playoffs recently and noticing some of the players that I've grown up with that I expect to be the elite of the elite. 
maybe don't have that edge anymore and you have to readjust what your expectation is, what is fair to them at this point in their career. And to realize then we have Faker and it is still the utmost pinnacle of expectation and standards that is held to him. And he delivers on it so many times. He still has to fall at number three here because of the performances of Knight and Chovy. This is nothing about what Faker has done. This isn't about the Rift Herald mistake in finals and this is the punishment. It's nothing like that. He has been phenomenal. It's that recognition of where Knight and Chovy are. First, Knight, what he has done for BLG, he has stepped in and been that impact guy that you acquired in the offseason. He has been the superstar that he has been labeled and claimed about for so long in the LPL. This is the time that I really believe you're going to see it on the international stage. You've already seen glimpses of it at some times. You're going to get the full blinding sun rays at this event with BLG and the way that Knight is performing. But man, what is what, what do you do when you got the blinding sun? We just saw that with the Eclipse. You get those cool shades on. You know who's got those cool shades? It's your boy Chovy. And the MVP performance that he just put on in the LCK, a historic level of a difference that he was able to separate between himself and any other mid laner this is the top dog and this is the top uh, you know form that we have ever seen chovy roll into an international event i know that's a scary thing for some people because of the chokey allegations and yes last year we did have a chokey sighting after shedding that label for quite a few years but the way that he is rolling on through the dominance the control the x factor in a pick like the aurelian soul that we saw through that lck finals this is the Chovy at number one in the power rank. There were, in years past, even even whiffs in playoffs in the regular season where Chovy would be a little bit too passive, invisible in some games, even though he has so much CS. I can't think of a single one in the LCK. He was dragging four corpses, even in playoff games, for this stack Gen G roster. These two top two mid laners, a combined seven domestic titles in a row. So it doesn't matter how good Faker was because Knight and Chovy are just at another level and they are why mid lane is the most stacked position at this event. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. Thank you for hanging out with us as always and we'll catch you on that flippity flip.